I mean? Yeah, so when we look at aggregate multiples for the technology space, um, on a relative basis, they're at a 15-year high. They're the highest they've been since the bubble. Tech's trading at about 21 and a half times. Earnings, forward earnings, the market's at about 17 and a half times. So at about a 30% premium, uh, which is rich relative to recent history. And so in aggregate, the tech market is relatively expensive. But what we observe is the highest growth, most expensive tech stocks, which we define as the top 20% of tech stocks on, on evaluation metric, those are particularly expensive relative to history. And so we, we think that there is uh, caution warranted, particularly among expensive stocks. Now, tech is more expensive because investors believe growth will be better, uh, returns on capital are very strong, free cash flow is strong. So there's some merit to it, but it's always good to look at history. And expectations for the highest growth stocks are very high, and valuations are very high relative to history. Tony, will growth be better? I mean, I'm just looking at these notes right now. Earnings for the tech sector expected to drop almost 10% on an equal weighted basis over the next 12 months. That doesn't sound better. Well, on an equal, you know, we, we do have a lot of uh, big names that are coming off very tough comps, you know, a name like Apple, for instance, um, a name like NVIDIA, et cetera. And so, there are a number of companies that, you know, had really great years last year. There was a strong economic cycle. We had tax reform, et cetera. And so we're seeing earnings in aggregate uh, for the marketplace to be down, but they're a little bit more down for, for tech. And so that, you know, that is part of the reason why the, valu the valuations are more elevated. I think over the next five years, investors expect much better earnings growth from tech than the broader market. This year and next, that's not really the case. Tony, I want to get your thoughts on the payment space. When we talk about high valuations, you take a look like at PayPal and Square up more than 30 percent this year, Visa, MasterCard as well. Do they come down to earth in the rest of the year or keep that run going? Yeah, it's look, it's very difficult to say in terms of making a sector call or, um, where we found that most elevated valuations are particularly in, in mid-cap software right now. And so I think that's an area where, look, there's a move to cloud. There are very robust growth rates. Um, a lot of investors believe that run can continue. But when we look at relative valuations and we look at, um, we have a metric called quality of earnings, which looks at uh, persistence of revenue growth, persistence of earnings uh, and margins, it's really uh, that sector in particular that screens uh, highest to us. Tony, you got market performs on Apple, am I correct? And correct. Tesla and correct. IBM. I mean, what, what does excite you if none of these large names do? Well, um, you know, tech hardware is a very uh, difficult sector. And so part of the reason why we have market weights on most of our names is structurally there's simply less growth. And so we look for you know, stocks that are ultimately beaten down. And we found opportunities in the past with Hewlett Packard Inc. and Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Um, and so really the trigger point for us is when expectations get overly pessimistic for IT hardware stocks. Right now, that's not really the case. In Apple's case, you know, our price target is 190. We'd ideally like to see, you know, the price closer to 160 for us to really believe that that's an active trading call. At 200, we think expectations are relatively in line um, with uh, where the stock price is. Tony, how do you game out these U.S.-China trade talks, especially when you are talking about names like Apple or Tesla or some of the other hardware stocks? Yeah, look, um, you know, Apple has very significant exposure, uh, the most in our coverage universe, in part because China is a big end market. It's about uh, almost 20 percent of Apple's revenues. Um, and, um, and there could be significant retribution in an escalating trade war where China not only uh, makes it more difficult for Apple to sell its equipment there, but it also makes it more difficult for Apple to produce uh, things there. So vendors that are um, like Hewlett Packard Inc. or Apple in our coverage universe that manufacture a lot in China and also have in-market China exposure are the names that uh, we worry most about. And look, I, I, you know, this has been a seesaw. I think at the beginning of the year, people were nervous. Uh, you know, then there was a truce for 90 days and people kind of forgot about 
trade and uh, and it re-escalated and, and now obviously we have some important meetings later this week. Um, but, but you know, hardware stocks in particular, the two that I mentioned, are, are highly exposed to China and very sensitive to a daily news flow around, around those talks. Tony, is there an opportunity in the ride-sharing names like Uber and Lyft? I mean, no exposure to China. Uber has an investment in Didi, but they're still trading below their IPO prices. And if you believe Uber is ultimately going to be a mega cap, there's a long way to go. How are you looking at these names? Yeah, I mean, I don't cover um, uh, Uber specifically, so I'm, I'm remiss about commenting on valuation. Um, but.